It is December, uh, which means it's Die Hard season. Already, the original Die Hard, Die Hard 2, were being shown on cable. Mm -hmm. Isn't it weird when we were growing up, it was It's a Wonderful wonderful Life, and now it's John McClane saving yeah. Nakatomi Plaza. I, guys, I'm sorry. Everyone's going to hate me for this. I know. Uh, everybody in the podcast, or everyone in the uh, chat room or watching right now, don't hate me for this, but I don't think it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> What you don't think it is? I don't. They are they're playing jingle bells and and uh... <laughs> Christmas and Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Run DMC. Yeah, we got the Run yeah. DMC Christmas song. Uh, that and Lethal Weapon are Christmas movies. In so, Even though Die Hard did come out in July, uh, you don't year. think the Home Alone is another one that everyone thinks is a Christmas movie as well? But I did hear me out. I, I like It's a Wonderful Life. To me, that's a Christmas movie. Uh, Christmas Story, that's a Christmas movie. Um, and then, like, all the claymations that I used to love mm. as a little kid. You know, Rudolph, Santa, Frosty the Snowman. Um, to me, those were Christmassy Christmas movies yeah. or shows. Do you know what I mean? So, so, like, when I see, like, these other movies, I'd watch them year-round. Like, I don't get mm. Christmas vibe when John McClane's, you know, falling off a 50-story <laughs> building. I mean, Wait, Home Alone. Blocks. You don't think Home Alone is a Christmas movie? I'm gonna get heat for that too. I know. Oh, I man. know. I, okay, I'll give you Thanks. one that does remind me of Christmas. It's because it's in its title, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Yeah, that could show in a lot. I, the one I'm sick of is Love Actually being on all the time. I've what? never seen that. Matt, you're not watching the right channels. Uh, it's a British film. It follows like ten different stories about. People, some like Hugh Grant's in it as like the prime minister. Um, uh, Martin Freeman's in it. There's like 10 different stories, and it's about like couples getting together around Christmas. It's got a famous scene where a guy's in love with his uh, his friend's fiance, and she opens the door and he has cue cards and he's like pretend it's Christmas carolers, carol and he's expressing his love for her. Um, it's, it's I'm telling you, Matt, watch any female leaning channel. During the month of December, and Love Actually is on all the time. Like my mom loves this movie. You can't escape it. It came out 20 years ago. Um, but I feel like that Christmas yeah. Vacation, Christmas Story, Die Hard. The one that I like that's not a Christmas movie um, is about a boy. With Hugh, speaking of Hugh Grant, which the end of it takes place at Christmas. But that I think you guys, if you guys haven't seen that, I think you would really like it because it's about a guy who's our age, uh, or he was at the time it came out. And he doesn't work. He doesn't do anything. He just like dates women. But then he has a relationship, uh, a friendship with this kid where he becomes like a surrogate father. It's a very nice movie. But I think that men, especially, especially men of our generation, just get a lot out of this movie um, about yeah. like relationships. It's very good, but it ends at Christmas. I'll check both out. Yeah. All right. Our old good friend, just stellar Justin Lopez. Thank you for the super chat. He says any and every movie with Christmas being central to the plot and or the major season in which the, the film takes place is a Christmas movie. And this includes Die Hard, Batman Returns. I don't know about that one. Gremlins and Lethal Weapon. Gremlins. Like, I remember seeing that as a kid. That Phoebe Cates monologue is still one of the darkest things I've ever seen in a movie. Uh, which talks about why she doesn't celebrate Christmas. Um, I still think about that and just get depressed. Yes. I, 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 I guess I think I'm crazy. I do. Okay. I feel a little bit of the gremlin part. Um, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. But again, I don't know. I, it has, has to me, it's got to have like Santa in it. <laughs> Did um, you watch? Well, Die Hard had, they, he dressed the one bad guy up as Santa before, you know, after he was killed. Right? Wasn't he uh, in the same outfit? Or is Listen, that the, I know. The, I'm in the minority. I know. Everybody on this planet thinks Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I know that. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to watch. Did you watch Violent Night last year? The one with uh, David Harbour from Stranger Things? Yeah. That was good. Raj, you haven't seen that? No. I He's actually that. Santa Claus, but Santa Claus, like, resolves a hostage situation. <laughs> like, it, it's really a good, good movie. Honestly sounds ridiculous the way you just put it but i promise <laughs> you it's really good yeah it's good. yeah it's yeah. violent it's bloody but as far as christmas movies go like that was cool um yeah. that was trying to out die hard die hard in some ways i felt like die hard one is one of those i so i showed it to my daughter my oldest daughter and Which she's not a big action movie fan and she loved it she thought yeah. it was really good yeah and uh it's one of those like it's so weird that bruce willis actually was like the 
15th choice for that movie. They went to everybody before uh, Bruce Willis. But um, yeah, huh. it's it's a classic. And it, during the holidays, we I always put it on. That's my It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, the reason Die Hard is so influential and Die Hard 2, which I think is a very good movie, is Die Hard was the birth of the smart action movie. If you think about what 80s action movies were, it usually was very cookie cutter, um, you know, like Commando or something where it's like, okay, there's the bad guy and there's the good guy. Die Hard was the birth of giving us a likable, charismatic villain who had an interesting plan. And the characters in that movie were much more layered than was in your standard 80s action fair. So look at what happened Mm -hmm. after that. Um, I think Lethal Weapon 2, you know, definitely has a lot of... Mel Gibson's character gave us that. Yeah, Lethal Weapon 2 is, I think, a big improvement on Lethal Weapon 1 story-wise. But then look at Cliffhanger. Look at Passenger 57. Look at the template for Speed, even, which originally could have been Die Hard 3. Uh, It was written with Die Hard 3 to mind. Die Hard brought in the smart action movie, which is why it's still just such an utter classic. And it's the formula, right? Smart, charismatic villain, interesting plot, but not too complicated. Because, like, the first Mission Impossible movie, I still can't tell you what that was about exactly. (laughs) Any of them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, way just like uh, there's a They're file. Watch. <laughs> yeah, and I like when they take when they pretend to be the people and take off the mask. Right. Um, but no, Matt, to your point, it's not. There are movies though that are like coming to America. We watch around Christmas. It's not a Christmas movie, but we just that's a good movie you can put on. The family will enjoy it. I love that movie. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, and it's nice to have that. I mean, now what's really funny though. I don't know if you guys have realized this, like Gen X, like we're the new baby boomers. And what I mean by that is that when we were growing up, it seemed like everything was for people that grew up in the 50s, you know, and the early 60s. And now flip around cable and it's just nonstop like, oh, uh, you know, like I saw today, like Once Bitten is on, Back to the Future still always on, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is on. And these are on different channels when I'm flipping around and it's like, they're programming it for us in our generation. Like this is everything that's being shown now because they know people are at home and they want to watch stuff that they're comfortable with and enjoy, have nostalgia for. 